What's up, YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into Chase Games here. And today, um, I just found myself thinking, what do we have less left to blossom? Um, and even though the blossoms don't come in chronological order, really not even close to it, you could say, um, they do obviously stick with the older units. Um, I'm not going to waste time pondering what the most recent one was. Some of them came much more uh, uh, recently than others, like we still have things from the general pool not blossomed. But I thought, you know what, let's take a look at all of the units that were from before the one year anniversary. Um, it, we will end it with a gem slime though, because that was the pre one year anniversary. Nocturnus isn't on here because he sure doesn't need a bloom. Um, honestly, you could probably argue that some of the first things that came out after the first year uh, they're definitely not meta anymore, but I don't think that they're blossom status yet, exactly. Um, but, uh, I think I have these in chronological order, and I'll, I'll forewarn. I don't remember Shorts Hold, um, you know, the, uh, the thing that we got in Arena before Teeny Sanguini. I don't remember that. That probably was before the one year. It probably was. Um, but I'm not going to include him. Uh, so be, we've got 19 units uh, from launch to the one year that have not been blossomed. So let's start with an interesting one. Uh, Emperor Slime. Gosh, uh, he definitely needs to blossom. Um, I did not mess with any of these things beforehand. I don't think mine's Awakening 5, but it's fair to say... Uh, my slime rank's actually a little low. There's not a, a terrible uh, amount of slime units, so I think my master rank's 35. I'll put it there. 484 HP. Now, granted, uh, there's a lot of... You can get, like, another two, 300 on them with equipment, but uh, you also want wisdom on them. I think 427 is a good wisdom score. The defense, 704. Um, pretty, uh, pretty high. Uh, obviously, really high. Now, he's not, like... Um, he, he's, you know, he's like the original version of Diamond Slime, you know. Uh, but he doesn't have any reduction skills. He's not resistant to everything or whatnot. He just had really high HP and a really low defense, which meant anything other than a, a strictly physical attack is going to knock him out just instantly. You, you just breathe on him and he's gone. Um, but he's got a good kit. Kabuff, Cheer, Multi-Heal. This guy was terrific until Seraphie came out. Um, the problem with blossoming a healer, they've not blossomed a healer other than, yeah, no, it just, uh, there's no, uh, you know, mentionable, uh, unit that's gotten a, a blossom as a healer yet. Um, yeah, it's, it's a joke, guys. I know. I didn't forget him. He just doesn't count. Um, yeah, so what I'm getting at is... <sighs> His Blossom will either be underwhelming, or they will finally dethrone Seraphie, I think. Because um, Seraphie is the only healer. I talked about this on my stream the other night. Young Terry is a support unit. If you need healing, like a lot of healing, Young Terry doesn't hold a candle to Seraphie. It's literally not even close. Um, so, yeah, um, his Blossom would have to be pretty good. He would need defense and... He already has sporadic MP regen, I believe, um, with his first awakening. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know, like, maybe something more like Angelic Charm. Uh, obviously, the new ability would have to be a heal. Maybe they could try to turn him into a damage unit with multi-heal. That would be interesting. Um... So it make him more like uh, gem slime or uh, diamond slime rather than a healer. Uh, I don't know. Uh, White King. White King is another interesting one. The second of the three uh, general pool that isn't awakened. Um, he can still put out a, a relevant amount of damage. This is not a guy that you can bring to Arena anymore. He has no HP. Jesus. He's... Okay, this is uh, Awakening. Um, say Awakening 40 for this guy. Uh, okay, so he's got 200 more HP than Emperor Slime. Um, fairly agile. 
Okay, maybe Emperor Slime's wisdom isn't great. He's got a high wisdom. 459 is pretty high, I'm sure. Um, yeah, he's got the sporadic MP regen, so, like, he's still useful in longer fights. I saw a door 25 strat that used him, and it relied on him slowly uh, regening uh, MP at the end of the fight. There's a couple of Blossom doors that you may not have to do that strategy, but I know that, um, I know I did a couple of clears where the best way by far seemed, at least with my units, seemed to be, uh, you know, uh, letting uh, MP regen a bit. Um, so this guy, honestly, he's, w what do you do to Blossom him? Yes, he's irrelevant, but also, uh, I think he's still at the point where if they gave him anything too decent in a Blossom, he'd be really strong. Then again, they haven't been too afraid to make the Blossom, uh, the, uh, the general pool of Blossoms very meta, very strong. Uh, they've been very generous. Um, yeah, I don't know about White King. He, he would need some kind of survivability. Giving him even 200 HP right now I don't think would be close to enough, you know, two 100 HP nodes. They would have to give him some kind of evasion, uh, heal, something of that nature. I'm not sure. I'm just saying. He needs some kind of survivability. And, um, you know what? A spell of another element would be huge. Huge on him. I mean, he's got XAML. If you give him some kind of Zam AoE spell, amazing. Uh, another movement would be nice. Uh, they're not they're not giving every caster three movement now, but they're getting more comfortable with it, so... Pretty strong there. And, uh, finally, Great Troll. Great Troll's just never really been too relevant um honestly i forgot that spinning wheels 250 percent um physical potency um that is a relatively strong attack uh let me see no he's got a low attack though um well maybe we'll say 40 for him um yeah no no defense high hp got 1400 hp Let's say you're not gonna. Well, let's say his weapon and armor give him another hundred. Well, we'll put it up to fifteen hundred. Arena gives you thirty percent more HP, so four fifty. He'd have just under two thousand HP in Arena, not even focusing on HP. Um, and I only give him a little bit of uh, armor and weapon equipment because most armor and equipment come with some HP. <clears throat> so yeah, that'd be a high. Uh, that's a high HP in Arena. Um, before blossoming him, him. Uh, so, I can't remember if attack 506 is good at full awakening on a rank 8 now. Definitely doesn't seem to be bad, so this guy could put out some good damage right now. Um, and honestly, defense is... It's really easy to think that a low defense is, is awful, but it, it again, it only matters against physical skills. Um, physical is still pretty dominant in arena, but, um... You know, it's becoming less so because there's so many evasion units now. Um, so I think he is still at the point where what do you give him in a Blossom that doesn't make him... He Here's the thing. Uh, they would have to give him an underwhelming Blossom right now, I think. Um, because if they gave him, like, a good Blossom, he'd be ridiculous. Still, uh, I'd be excited to see what they do with him. It'd be great to see him relevant because I think I have more copies of him than anything else. You know, I'll have my five extra agility on them. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll walk all over all the whales now because I outspeed them. It's sarcasm, guys. All right, uh, Sly and Heart. What was this? Um, all right, the first two banner units we had, well, in global, um, I think, well, no, sorry, Killing Machine was the first banner unit, kind of. Uh, did JP start with Dread? Anyway, let, let's say that Dread... Killing Machine, Dragon Lord, Dragon Lord True Form. This was the fifth banner unit on JP. Um, fourth for us. I, I'm pretty sure I got that right. Um, and you, here's the thing: you start doing some Blossom Doors. Blossom Doors post 20. He is not the like you don't use him on every fight. Of course, there's no unit that use every single fight. Even like Malroth is only in about half the strats that I did. Um, maybe two-thirds. Um, this guy, uh, his uh, Windy Slice and Dice gets a lot of use in uh, Blossom Doors. So, uh, this guy, a lot... Of, I mean, he's been in the general pool for quite some time, so we'll say 35 again for Slime. Um, he's very weak defensively. 
Again, the, the defense isn't high, but that doesn't really matter. It's, it's the HP. Um, you know, attack. Yeah, 576 attack. He's, he's got a high attack. Um, I think that's actually a fairly good agility. Um, movement 3, of course. But he's got no range on his abilities. Slime Slash can hit, you know, one square ahead. Uh, Lightning Multi Slash can hit the units to the side. But that's not a good... It's not strong. You know, it shares the attack. So you don't want anything next to whatever you're using lightning multi slash on uh that said though i mean look he's got a he's got a whoosh attack and he's got a zap uh zap type attack zap is a b rank b rank skill that's 455 percent strikes um it's it's like a b plus tier skill um so i mean you can still do some damage to this with this to something that's weak to zap um but for pve uh rarely lowering defense uh on his four hit uh Wish type physical potency attack is what is keeping him relevant, but I I think he still sorely needs a blossom. Uh, you can really only use him in a cover tank scenario right now. So um, his damage is lacking at this point, but honestly, uh, I'm not sure. So I mean, he needs a good blossom skill. It doesn't have to be crazy. Um, he needs some survivability, uh, and the the blossom stats his. Give him some HP, give him some kind of survivability trait, uh, and the rest of the Blossom stats, you know, you're going to get 20, 30, you know, attack and defense along the way. Uh, his new ability would either need some range or he'd need some kind of, kind of movement perk at this point, too. Three agility on a physical unit is not good enough. Um, you give him that, this guy's going to be amazing, so. Um, I believe uh, Dragwar came before... Uh, DQ4. I, th I think DQ4 came with Arena, and this guy came like five minutes before Arena. Uh, this guy, I haven't used him in a while. He still has some power. Um, Beast, let's say Beast is 40 on family rank. Um, Awaken 5. I know it. Again, I just, I know that not everybody has him Awaken 5, but a lot of people do. Um, again, still like not great on HP. Attack 583. Where is Slyingheart? So even higher than Slyingheart. Um, although that might be the family, uh, the master rank. Uh, defense is irrelevant. High agility. Yeah, higher than Slyingheart. Um, move four though. Okay, so he's got move four. Beastly roar. Being able to hit the diagonals ahead of him um, gives him a tiny bit more range. But this is um, this is before martial damage was relevant. I don't, then again, I mean, at rank 8, maybe this does a relevant amount of damage. Um, occasionally stuns. Okay, so I have finally had to learn how resistances work. Now, this is not a... This is a damaging ability. So when you level this up, if you take this all the way to 10, the stun is still going to be a 40% chance, okay? It does not... It's not like non-damaging um, uh, status effects that uh, the leveling on that puts it up 1 or 2%. This will always be a 40% chance, but a unit that's weak to stun, this is an 80% chance to stun. Um, and, uh, yeah, major martial typeless damage could be relevant now. Um, he's movement for, um, and he's got a big, uh, uh, hit here. And this is something to remember, um, on, uh, Blossom units. Sometimes you're like, well, that Blossom doesn't look really strong. I can't think, there was, um... Gosh, what, what? Um, there was one thing that I didn't think was going to be impre Oh, Squidzilla. Squidzilla, you're like, how is he doing so much damage? I don't see, like, all the damage that they added to him in the Blossom. And you forget that he comes with a perk. Uh, this is not exactly like Squids, but... Um, Battlestar raises attack for two turns. So he comes with a single um, uh, attack buff. Um, yeah, a single level of attack r uh, raising. Only for two turns. Um, but remember, if you buff him within the first two turns, uh, it will extend the duration on it to the normal duration of three turns. So, um, you know, that's more of a PvE thing, but, you know, if you start off with Seraphie in PvE, um, you know, now he's got a double attack buff, uh, for the first three turns, just right off the bat, because Seraphie is usually using Gritty Diddy the first turn. Um, so anyway, I mean, he'll probably, I mean, he's gonna get more attack through his boss, I mean, even if it's just one or two nodes. Um, I could see a, a, an Agile unit like this will probably get some kind of evasion. Um, 
and yeah, I guess just a, a damaging ability with some range. A different element could be possible. I don't know what they do on them. I don't see Frizz. Hopefully not Bang. Um, if they gave him... I don't know. If they gave him a different uh, element on a new attack. Uh, or even something like, you know what? Uh, man, if they turned him into Squidzilla with another Whoosh-type tackle attack, that would be... That would be godly. Uh, but, again, like, Sly and Heart and Dragwar, they're, they're due for a Blossom, but they're just... Here's the thing, they're still relevant. They may not be meta. They're sure as shit not meta. Um, but this guy, you know, when he gets his attack, uh, you, 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 it's easy to raise his attack up. He's still doing... 285% um, is a little bit stronger than the old A-rank uh, physical single-strike skills uh, that were 270, so... This guy's still putting out some damage. Uh, and then Kirill. I don't want to waste a lot of time on Kirill, but Kirill sorely needs a Blossom. Um, I don't know... This is another just tiny issue with uh, the DQT uh, database. I love this tool, by the way. Go to the... I'll have the link in the description. Um, you know, I support him on Patreon. You, can, uh, you might do so yourself to help uh, improve and keep the tool going. Um, but, yeah, I don't know why he says that Carol already has a Talent Blossom, because he obviously doesn't, and he is sorely in need of one. Moving on. Sorrow the Manslayer. Uh, God, he came with, you know, his first, uh, no, it wasn't even his Awakening. He comes with a barrier that reflects spells for three turns. And guys, if you're a new player or you don't remember the good old days, um, magic was king. The physical units had no range, and... I mean, the, everything was like two movement, maybe three. Three was highly agile for uh, a physical unit. And uh, so they'd be two or three movement and would just have like a basic attack that just hit the enemy in front of them. Uh, and then casters, you know, casters are also two move, obviously. But they're hitting two things, ahead, or three squares ahead of them with AoE off to the sides um, and whatnot. So uh, just for the first uh, six months of the game, uh, like... Yeah, magic was clearly, clearly better. Um, so this guy having a, a spell bounce shield, reflex field, was just going to be amazing. And this guy was super powerful. Uh, for a month or two, he fell off. Here's the thing, though. Far from irrelevant now. This is not really... Um, let's say Awakening 3 on this guy. Um, and I think... 30? 30 for uh, boss types. Um, that's a good HP score, 1,200 at Awakening 3. Um, good attack. It's not It's not crazy high. Well, you know, let's put him at Awakening 5 just because everything else is... Okay, so I attack. Um, crap agility. Yeah. Um, this guy necessitated... Uh, agility weapons, just so he didn't miss. Everybody was like, Yo, look, I know his weapon's gonna have, like, attack stuff on it. You have to go agility, otherwise he's gonna miss. Uh, but he's got, uh, at the time, three movement, with uh, Demotic Devastation doing uh, damage around yourself, the Radius 1 AoE. That was great range on a physical unit. Um, and, again, it's not irrelevant, but it's dated. His range is dated, I think is the way to say it. Uh, grotesque Fist, 250% potency physical damage, uh, pulls units, uh, two spaces closer. Uh, that's still a good ability, but, you know, it's not, you know, uh, it's, again, the, the damage is still a little dated. Uh, pulling is not what it used to be because pulling is still useful, but everything has amazing range now, so you don't usually need a pull. You know, this was to make your other, you know, uh... To, to give your your other melee units an, an actual chance in combat to friggin' hit something. Uh, it doesn't work like that anymore. Uh, and then moderate zap uh, breath rarely paralyzes. Um, it's not the worst uh, first ability, but, you know. Uh, he's just dated. What would they give him? I don't know if he needs more survivability. He's got a um, below average defense, I would say. Good HP. Um, attack. So, I mean, some just the, the generic blossoming stats would help him. I guess he would just need... He needs more agility. Um, 
I don't know how they make him better defensively. He just needs some range, I think. Uh, and again, you know what? I mean, 280% uh, physical potency. It's not crazy anymore. It's still good. It's still relevant. But with that kind of range, that's not enough. So, I don't know. Just, you know, he needs a he needs a blossom, but he's not dead yet. Nimzo. Nimzo is literally only used for Nadirian Mist. Um, so, blossoming him... him Blossoming him wouldn't really affect that. Um, let me see. I guess I, I guess I'll still put him at awaken five. I mean, who has this guy at awaken five? N nobody does. But let's let's just put him there. Um, Infernal breath rarely lowers agility for three turns. Rare on effect like that. Uh, I don't know. That attack's irrelevant. Um, moderate frizz type breath damage one to four times. I think this was good damage when it came out, not great good damage when it came out. It's range 3. Remember, that's not range 1 through 3. Range 3. Um, and I know this guy has some use in Blossom Doors because his first awakening gives him a counterattack with a fireball. Uh, that was the, uh, that was the first, um, that was the first counterattack. Um, I think it's range 1. I don't know if I don't know if that has range on it. They never state. These 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 abilities always need a bit more description. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say. Um, I don't know what you give this guy. I mean, they would probably stick with breath damage. His attack is irrelevant. Uh, defense is good. Agility low. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he needs movement. He's only got two movement. Uh, so he needs movement, and I think they would need to go like the way of Malroth. Maybe you try to get some status conditions on a ability that does some good damage with him. Um, you give him Zam type, maybe. Yeah, he's actually a, he's a debuffer type. He's not a damage. Um, so yeah, some some ability. You know, I'd like his new ability to either be type neutral or um, Zam, maybe Zam Zap something. They try to keep things kind of thematic. Um, I'd like to see his new ability with some kind of status condition on it, with an occasional chance. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'd say that he sorely needs one, because he's completely irrelevant. Uh, other than, you know, a couple of long-term strategies take advantage of his counterattack, but that's not, you know, it's not, it's hardly relevant. Um, yeah. Uh, a Stark. Uh, a Stark is not as dead as people think. Um, I know mine's only at three. We'll say five, though. I know there are some guys out there that have him at Awaken 5 and just can't stop pulling copies of them. It's an inside joke for a new YouTuber. Go subscribe to Fart Smucker. <laughs> uh, his name makes me laugh every time. Alright, three movement. Okay. Um... Attack 588, high attack, obviously. Good HP. And he comes with a, a heal. You know, it's hard to take him down with one hit. So every time you... if you, Well, sorry, not every... The first time you drop him bef below 50% HP, he's going to heal nearly to full. It's a large heal. It's not a, it's not a complete heal. Um, this guy's only problem is move three. Okay, he's got... Imperial Strike is dated. 300% typeless. That was good when he came out. Not irrelevant, but it's not, it's not good anymore. Um, in 280% potency damage. Now, it's only the enemy in front of him that you have to target something in front of you. But it also hits the two tiles to each side. So, so this is, uh, this is the Zam version of what Helbert Saurus is getting tonight, I believe, on Global. Um, although by the time I finish, forget uploading, by the time I record this video, Helbert Saurus is going to be a week old. Jesus. Um... Alright, so, and Dark Flames, you know what, Dark Flames is not good damage, but, I mean, Movement 3, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's nice to be able to do some damage with him. Um, and Zam is a little uncommon still, so, not what it used to be, but I would like to see Zam on more units. Uh, so, really, this guy, he needs some move. It's one of the few units that doesn't need any survivability. Um, let's see. I mean, this guy, you know, they're going to save this for an anniversary or something like that, I, I would imagine, but um, 
a lot of people are like, oh, he's outdated. Uh, he's dated, but he's far from irrelevant, okay? This guy is still gonna put out some great damage. Um, you know, God help any giant boss unit that is weak to Zam, or even just type neutral Zam. He's gonna, he's gonna lay waste to their, uh, <laughs> to their front line. So yeah, um, Seraphy. Okay. <laughs> Seraphy never needs a blossom. Alright, Overkilling Machine. This guy, you know what? Uh, I remember, uh, if you guys have ever heard of this scrub that does okay in Arena, uh, Tropical Visions. Tropical came around, uh, Discord's going, Oh my god, I can't wait for Overkilling Machine, this is what I've saved all my gems for. And then I looked at it, and I'm like, hey, this guy's pretty damn good. I think I want him too. And, uh... <laughs> I, we have to look at him in Awakening 3. I've never seen anybody have him at 5. Um, dude, like, we we both... I went to Pity... No. I got him... On, like, the end of my first stamp card, I think. Uh, and this was before the 45k Pity. Uh, Tropical used all of his gems to get him on the 90k Pity. And, uh... <laughs> it turns out, yeah, we didn't have the f the fifteenth pull pity um, until the first year. Uh, Nocturnus was the first unit. Um, turns out he's a, he gets his first awakening. Uh, his first awakening is movement, so he's completely he's completely useless without an awakening. Um, but uh, what's nice is he does some good damage. Frizz physical was just not a thing yet um, on S ranks at least. Uh, so two hundred and fifty percent physical potency with a you know, it's, uh, you know, the three-line AoE, but, uh, one space in front, unlike, you know, things like Crackle, it's one range shorter. Um, but that's, uh, quite a bit of damage, and his, uh, base, he got, a a double attack buff at the start of battle, and, uh, double spell resistance, um, for two turns. So, the first two turns are all that matter in Arena, um, especially the first turn, so, this guy's gonna go and, uh, you know, a double buffed uh, Frizz Physical Attack on turn one. That's amazing. Um, he's got Cracker Whack, 250% uh, physical potency, uh, typeless, rarely stuns. Um, so, not bad there, you know, if things are resistant to uh, Frizz and whatnot. Again, that's getting a double attack boost. Uh, this guy was going to be great, um, but only if you pull this Awakening. So, uh, this guy was. When did we get him? Like, months... Month 8? Month 9? Month 10? I don't remember. He came basically just before... Like, he was short-lived. Because we don't get inorganic fragments, so both... This is a little bit personal. Tro Trop and I both took, like, a month or two to be able to awaken him. And basically, he was useful for about five minutes before he was outdated. This guy got outdated quickly, so... I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time saying what he needs. Um... Probably survivability. He needs more agility. Um, he's not as outdated in things as the other units. But, um, yeah, he just needs a little bit more range. Maybe, uh, you know what, if they could give him a zap-type attack. They're doing a lot of zap lately. Give him another element of some sort. Uh, anything other than bang and frizz. And he'll be looking really good. 492 agility, that's fairly good. You still need agility equipment on him in Arena, but... Yeah, he's, he's good. Uh, just just a little bit outdated. Uh, we're getting towards... This is... Got, we're, so we're at DQ7 now. So... Um, again, th these are things that have been... Um, haven't been blossomed in JP. I know that I've skipped units that we don't have in Global yet. Sorry. Um, it's actually fairly easy to find out about JP blossoms. Just look on the database. Um, or search Game 8. Um... Anywho, Maribel. I remember seeing Maribel. Maribel came out on JP right around when we got a Stark uh, on Global. And I thought, wow, they finally made an answer to a Stark. Because uh, she's got a uh, Firebird. You know, unreflectable Frizz-type spell damage. Um, Sorrow and the Manslayer is weak to Frizz. I'm like, alright, well, I guess he's going to dominate until him. Until then, like I said... Uh, a Stark was not, or sorry, Sorrow the Manslayer was not relevant for very long on Global. Um, other than that, I mean, she's got Kaswoosh Plus. Now, if they say Plus, I don't know if that makes it stronger than, 
uh, what they had on White King. Uh, single target, range 3, not range 1 to 3, range 3. Firebird is good. And then, um, let me see, her Infernal Flames um, deals major frizz type spell damage to all enemies and area effect. So is this, uh, does, it needs to target a unit, but it can be three squares ahead, and then it hits everything around it. That's what it is, I think. I've never used Maribel. I don't think I, I... No, I didn't draw a copy of her yet. I'm fairly certain. Um, she's probably strong, but just not... You know, I've gone on about this before. Um, I'm just going to put her at Awakening 3 as well. No, Nobody aimed for this, uh, for this unit. Um... There's the stats there. Uh, that's not even a high wisdom score. At least not at Awakening 3. Maybe. It is. I don't know. Okay, so it's a high wisdom score. Um, I don't know what she needs. Her range is good. You know what? This is the kind of unit you give her another... Uh, you give her one more movement. She's amazing. Um, anyway, what I was saying is... It's not that she's bad... It's just that there are so many, like, OP units that she doesn't really hold up. She came out right before uh, 2.0 hit global. Uh, I don't remember exactly when... And, and this is relevant for, for some of these units of this time. Uh, 2.0 on global, that is when we got the blossoming system. We got it a bit earlier than JP did. Um, it really, it changed things, you know? A unit like Maribel uh, didn't seem as strong. She might have been a month or two old when 2.0 came out. When you've got things, uh, you know, things in the general pool that outdamage her and outrange her and things like that. So, um, I, yeah, I don't know what you'd, you what you'd give her. Um, let me see. What's her? This is not an awakening skill. Raise a spell potency attack. Okay, so every turn she gets 10% more um, spell potency. Um, that's good, so she builds up. Uh, what is her first awakening? Uh, spell tricks. Okay. Uh, so that affects both of her skills. So she is... Look, she's not bad, but she's just not, like... She's not good enough to be relevant. Um, I don't know what to give her. It, she, it's too early for her to be blossomed. Um, I think they would have to do what they did. I think some of the brides. The brides got blossomed in JP. We'll, we'll be getting those in two months, probably, if that. Um, I think Bianca's really good. I think Nera and um, Debra got weak blossoms because they were not irrelevant units yet. I think that's what they would do to her. I think her blossom would just be a tiny, tiny push-up and uh, would just be irrelevant quickly. Um, rough. Rough? Man. Um, let's see. We'll put him at 30... Um, I don't know, like, you, I guess I gotta put him at 5, uh, but nobody's got this guy at Awaken 5, other than the whales. Um, movement 4, okay, he's got movement 4, and look at his main ability here, okay, uh, it's only 250% potency, but it hits a small fan shape, so the unit in front and the, the three after it. On a 4 range movement, yes, this guy has enough range. When he came out, you know, you would compare him to Dragwar when he came out. But he had Dragwar's range, plus the fan attack. Dragwar didn't, you know, he didn't hit anything uh, more than five squares away. You know, you could move four and then just the one unit in he ahead of him. You know, maybe the things to the diagonal with his typeless uh, martial attack. So, this guy's range was fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, like, let's look at his HP at Awakening 1. 820. Okay, so you can put a little bit of HP on him. His defense is low. Um... He's not the weakest unit, but he's just, you know, just doesn't have enough to be relevant. Uh, fairly agile. Uh, you'd probably still need to put a agility equipment on him, but... Uh, in Arena, he costs 60, so that's not bad. I used him in Arena a little bit, because there wasn't much good for wish damage. Still a little bit lacking in wish damage, because I don't really like Nocturnus in Arena. Though he's not bad. Um... This guy just needs some kind of durability. Again, they could give him evasion. Evasion would be killer, but they're doing that quite a bit. Um, a heal would be okay. I don't know. It's almost like they need some kind of new um, 
thing, a, a damage reduction. I don't know. They need to give him some kind of survivability. Um, but this guy, his first awakening gives him... Um, okay, no, he, you don't need agility gear on him because he starts with uh, a single layer of attack and agility boost for three turns. Um, so once again, in PvE, fairly easy to start him off with um, a double attack buff if Seraphie still goes before him. Um, so, yeah, this guy, he's got maybe a, a little bit of a damage buff. You know, you give him a new ability with... You give him, a, you give him any other uh, element of attack. Um, or maybe, like, a multi-strike with lowering defense or attack. Lowering attack. This guy with attack lowering, something of that nature. Amazing. Just a little bit of survivability and another element or a status condition, something of that nature. I really, really want Ruff to be blossomed because I, he came right after DQ2. I'm fairly certain they, they're getting blossoms in a month. So, I mean, this guy, you know, I think he, he turned to irrelevance before. Well, Kanek never got a really, uh, got a chance to shine. So, um, but he was just too fragile to be in the spotlight long, especially since you know one year came with another big power upgrade. You know what was it like month nine ish? We got 2.0 uh, after this guy came out, so that dampened them a bit. And then the the, the quality of units after the one year, um, with the new strongest unit in the game being Wush as well, just made him irrelevant. So I would like to see Ruff get a, a resurgence. Uh, or Godemir. Oh, you know, I forgot DKO. Um, sorry. Is it... Yeah, um... Alright, so, we'll look at... <laughs> or go to Mir. Uh, he was dead on arrival. What's the Psy Spark? This is, uh, Typhlos, minor spell damage to random enemies and area of effect eight times. Um, I don't really know what that damage looks like. Nobody used him. Major Frizz Breath damage to all enemies and area of attack rarely raises damage taken for... Uh, zero turns. Um, it's got to be like one there. I heard that there was a discrepancy that he's actually better on global than JP. Um, maybe it was that Devil's Heart uh, wasn't supposed to get additional um, proc chance on leveling, and it did for global. There's something, I, apparently, I, I saw some mention in a chat the other day that he's better on global. Um, still, I don't know, what, what do you give this guy? Uh, grants plus 20% damage dealt if user's HP is 100%. Uh, and his first awakening is... Heals the user HP when drops to 20% on your last one time per battle. 20% is too low. But you're more than likely not going to hit that threshold. So I don't like that ability at all. Um... This, uh, Beauty Eternal, uh, max, extra damage at high HP, or max HP, rather. Um, so some kind of evasion or even a spell reflect would be amazing on this guy. Um, you know, some kind of breath. I don't know, because he's, he's relying on spell and breath damage. I don't know what they do with this guy. This guy just was not cared about. Uh, so it's not that he's terrible. He can probably do some respectable things. He's just just wasn't ever good enough. So I... I don't know. They would probably give him a really good blossom to get people to actually give a crap about him. Uh, and DKO. DKO disappointed a lot of people because on paper, he looks pretty good. Um, let me see. The leader skill lowers enemy attack by 20%. That's not great. It could be good on some PvE fight. Uh, Blazing Claw. I mean, that's a good range. Um, he came with... Um, let's, let's see... So I didn't bother doing this for regular Rogonami, who cares? Let's say Awakening 3, we'll look at him there. Attack 532, average to above average HP. Awaken 5, alright, so he's got, I don't know, it's, it's so hard these Awakening things, because who, who's who got 5 hearts on DKO? I think I've got 2, I definitely, I sure as heck wasn't happy about pulling more copies. Uh, so he's got a, he's got a good attack, um... You know, here's the thing. A high attack on this compared to a general pool unit, like, um, I know he's not general. Well, he is general pool now. 
Slyonheart, 576. And this guy is um, 577 at Max Awakening. It's not as valuable on him because who has him at 5 Awakening? You know, so like I said, in reality, let's say, I, you know, I spent a good amount of money on this game. This game, you know, I didn't aim for this guy necessarily, but I've got him at 2 Awakening, I believe. 510 compared to Slyonheart's 576, which free-to-play players have this guy maxed. I know, not every one of you, but I think a lot of players have him maxed. Um, I'm going to look at the Awaken 2 stats, because that's what I've got. Defense is not high. Agility is, is crap. Uh, so, and, and just an okay attack. So, again, his abilities, uh, Blazing Claw, that was a, a real good range at that uh, time. Three, you know, three movement and being able to hit, you know, the second and third uh, row ahead. Uh, occasionally lowers move for one turn or three turns. I'm not sure. Um, that was never really... I've never seen that put to good use, but it's a, a useful ability. Um, beautiful Blast. Everybody got excited about this. You know, he's 400% uh, typeless potency, uh, typeless uh, physical damage to all uh, Dark Lord enemies, an area of effect. It's a straight line, of course. 250% uh, to all others. So that's 250% typeless is not irrelevant. 400%, granted, remember, that's 600% at level 10. Um, we thought that would be a lot stronger, but again, everybody, everybody's going around with look, look, rank 1. Everybody but the biggest whales, if you went after this guy, um, he'd have about... I mean, now, I mean, crap, he came out rank 6? Rank six. I think we had him at rank 7. Let's put it at rank 6. Um, less master rank, 25, whatever. Um, this guy's looking at 418 attack. Um, yeah, so he had, he had a low attack. Or, not low, average, above average attack. Uh, so 400% is not enough to, like, knock out a, a Dark Lord. It did a good d amount of damage to it, but... At the time in Arena, you kind of needed to knock things out in one shot. Uh, there wasn't as much AoE. There wasn't as much good AoE as there is now. Uh, and then, so the uh, ominous impact, the Zam 250%, occasionally lowers Zam resistance for zero turns. That, almost completely irrelevant in Arena. So, again, Arena, you know, PvE, that's important. Arena, he just wasn't good enough. Um... And his Awakening... Okay, you needed his Awakening for move plus one. That's always lame. Uh, we thought he was going to be tankier than he is because his, uh, he comes with a double defense and spell resistance buff for the first three turns. Um, but it just wasn't enough because raising defense, not really a big deal. You hit him with anything but physical. And then spell resistance. Um, honestly, uh, Marshall and uh, Breath were getting more powerful now, so that wasn't as big a deal. Um, and again, just a double buff to crap defense and uh, double spell resistance with... His HP wasn't crazy. Um, I don't know. It was, it was above average HP, but not crazy. Um, it just wasn't enough for this guy to be good enough. So, um, a Blossom... I don't know. I don't know why I'm... I'm just... I'm rambling a lot, but that's chase games, guys. Okay, that's what you get. That's what you came here for. Beast spell potency plus 20% leader skill. That is good for uh, him and what, a C rank? <laughs> uh, beast casters. Alright, I know there's a couple more, but anyway. Um, this guy uh, was never strong, necessarily, but he had use. It's good, uh, he, you know what, it's an agile spellcaster. Alright, we can put him at plus 5. Beast, uh, we'll say 40. Um, so, uh, you know, low to average HP, defense is crap, agility is high, 513 agility, uh, good wisdom score. Um, you know, this guy, he came with magic fail, I've never seen anybody use magic fail on it, it's mostly Maya Frizz. Uh, regularly lowers defense for three turns, it's a nice addition, not really relevant. Um, this guy puts out a, a, some good single target spell for his damage. Um, I'm sure you guys have noticed, uh, any of you guys tackling Blossom Doors, you'll see this guy in a couple of strats. Um, oh, action turn, action start until race, uh, action start until turn three, raises wisdom for two turns. So, 
you know, that's one stack on turn one, two on two, three on three, and then that'll stay until... That'll wear off after round five. Um, so, yeah, he's doing um, he's doing some good damage there. Uh, awakening. Oh, okay, so he gets Frizzmeister. That's spell tricks for just Frizz. Um, yeah, um, what do they give this guy? I'm not even gonna... You know, he's away from a... Well, I mean... He could be a couple months away from a blossoming if they try to keep it spaced out like Halberd Saurus. What do they give him? Uh, AOE. Give him an AOE. A movement would be good. Would be good. Um, he's not the weakest caster, but I mean, some kind of durability is always good. Uh, yeah, I get just AOE. He just needs AOE. Uh, as always, another uh, a different element would be terrific. Marquee. Okay. I don't remember when he came out in relation to 2.0 with Blossoming, but this guy was really hyped uh, because he's got his first Awakening skill, Horde Master. Action start on even turns. That's, honestly, odd turns would have made this him much, much, much more relevant um, in Arena because, I'm sorry, you can argue with me, and I know that it's not 100% worthless, but... Anything that doesn't happen turn one on Arena is significantly less relevant. Um, so, action start on even turns until turn 10. Raises martial potency and effects for beasts in the surrounding Rhombus for three turns. Uh, so, Rhombus means the uh, two squares to each direction, you know, like a diamond shape. Um, and it affects him for four turns instead of three. Okay. Um... So, yeah, if you've got other Beast Marshal units uh, around him, he buffed... The, I think it's like a 20% buff. It's a 15-20% potency buff. So I think that's, like, total damage done. Don't hold me to that. Uh, oh, he's got a under 30% HP heal uh, once per battle. That's that's strong. Um, honestly, here's the thing. Um, he didn't... He's movement 4, but when he came out... Movement four with only a, with a thunder swipe being just the the unit in front of him um, wasn't wasn't enough to take uh, it, you know there was, wasn't much that he could hit turn one um, let, let's look at him more realistically we'll put him rank forty awakening one um, again you know he wasn't rank eight when he came out but we'll keep it there because those are the numbers I know now uh, not a super high agility it's it's not a bad agility but. He's not going to go first in Arena without uh, uh, agility gear on him. Uh, low defense. Um, decent attack. I mean, what's his attack like? So it's a high attack, but again, when you only have Minute Awakening 1, his attack is lower than general uh, uh, pool. Uh, so 75% potency four times. Assuming they all miss, that's, or hit, that's 300%. So it might be a little bit uh, higher. The rarely lowers defense is a nice addition. Rarely is 20%. Um, but again, in, in arena, lowering defense, uh, anything, lowering anything after the attack or with the attack doesn't really mean much. Uh, the problem is that this Beastmaster Howl, for movement with range like this, uh, straight line three, you know, deals major martial damage to all enemies in area effect, occasionally lowers martial resistance. That's a good move. Uh, unfortunately, in Arena, the occasionally... That's 40% chance that martial resistance is going to be reduced for, I'm going to say, three turns. Uh, that's a terrific event, uh, effect in PvE. In Arena, not useless. I know it's not useless, um, but it's useless. Um, and it just it doesn't do enough to knock things out. So, you know, you need to have... You, you could do well with having a couple of... Uh, AOE units all, all grouped together, but, you know, then they have to be about the same agility, um, so uh, and it depends on the terrain. Sometimes the terrain doesn't allow you to just put your two or three uh, AOE units just next to each other and you all nail the same things. Um, he was just a little bit overhyped. Uh, so what's this guy need? Um, I don't know. Uh, a damage reduction would be amazing, especially since 30% is still pretty easy to miss for his uh, heal. Um, and also when you're, when you're down to less than 30% HP, I think a major heal, it's probably going to take him to two thirds, three quarters HP. Um, his HP is low. Um, this guy's going to be a lot stronger when he's in the general pool. I think he is in the general pool on JP right now. So we're, 
they're probably not going to add them to our general pool until our two year, even though we'll be at that point in two months. They're still screwing us on Valencia and Santa Cristalinda. Cristalinda, nobody gives a shit, but... Um, Valencia is nice enough that it is a big... It's, it's a BFD that she is not in the pool, but I've just given up being upset about things like that because you're not allowed to complain about things here. Um, it was nice to uh, see some people in the Discord finally voicing some complaints to Malcolm the other day. I don't know if that's become more common or not, but um, I believe one, one user pointed out that we were the red-headed stepchildren compared to uh, Japan, and it's just nice to hear some of the big voices in the Discord say it. As much as I don't really care for most of them. Uh, so yeah, this guy's Blossom. He, I don't know. He doesn't seem that old, but he's ten months. He's seven, eight months old now. Uh, he definitely needs a Blossom, but not much of one. He, his Blossom's probably six months away. Helgard Vera, about the same. Um, she ended up being better uh, than him, in my opinion. Uh, her Beastmaster Blast is almost enough to knock things out uh, at the in the at the time in Arena. Um, by the way, uh, so Lionheart he relied on Martial and Attack, so he had a good attack. Um, she is Martial only. Um, so let me see. We'll put her at forty family. Um, I don't know. That's a it's an average HP uh, attack is low, but again, it doesn't matter. She's all Martial. And uh, pretty meh agility. Uh, it's it's a good agility. It's not it's not great. Again, nobody has her at five, but you can see her stats at five here. Um, it's a, it's a weird thing with spotlight units. You, it's just you can't compare them at Awakening Five to the general pool. That don't that's relevant to like fifty players in this game that wail out on units. Um, anyway, she's got a you know um, what was it? So she doesn't get extra movement in her her awakening necessarily. She gets uh, what is it? Oh no, uh, she comes with uh, greatly. So two extra movement for two turns in arena. That's all that you need. So she's moved four with another small fan attack, great range. Uh, this is single target, but it's three spaces ahead and pulls it close. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean she's got great range. She's just. Um, you know, it wasn't enough to one-shot in Arena, which doesn't seem like as big a deal now. Nothing one-shots in Arena, really. Um, but at the time, she just was, in my opinion, at Awakening 1, just came a little bit short. Um, oh, when attacking, occasionally raise martial potency effects for three turns. I don't know if that happened before or after the attack. Um, that would be a huge difference. Again, that's a 40% chance. Um, so what could her Blossom be? She doesn't need range, um, necessarily. More range is always better, of course, but... Um, an element? I don't know if they've... Have they added an element to things without one so far? I can't recall. An element would make her great. Uh, it would have to be Marshall, of course. Um, I don't know. She just needs... She just needs a little bit more. Especially now that she's uh, dated. I don't know what you give her. But, uh, again, basically everything needs some kind of defensive buff. Not that she's worse than other things. It's actually a, uh, an above average defense. Um, but, yeah, she just needs... I don't know. She just needs stuff. Barbados. Nobody liked her. Uh, you know what? Perplatypus fell in love with uh, Barbados. And that he was the only one. A single target Sizz spell. Uh, that had some relevance because we didn't have Sizz damage uh, back in the day. I think this was about five minutes after King She Slime's Blossom, but nobody, nobody had him ranked yet. Everybody heard that his Blossom skill was good, but nobody wanted to do it. You know, nobody... It, it was, it's, it's friggin' KSS. Nobody, nobody wants to invest in King She Slime, the literal worst unit in the game. <laughs> uh, we all love, love King She Slime, though. Um, so anyway, uh, but, you know, a single target spell, nobody likes to see single target spells. Uh, no, no, no riders on it, no additions. Uh, bang, this was the beginning of every single unit coming with a bang spell, I believe. Um, 
it's good it's good range at least so it's it's range three with the uh the cross pattern um start the, you know the plus sign pattern major bangs fell damage occasionally lowers bang resistance for three turns um you know honestly i mean spell casters with a uh, decent range and two elements this guy probably had a good spot in the arena for a minute um but nobody cared about him um you know he wasn't part of it he was part of what story Chapter 2, Part 1, I think, when we got, um... The, the chick with four movement with Crackle, you know, the, the angel wing girl, that one, the farm away rank, he came with her. Um, yeah, he's get. What, what do you give him in a Blossom? I don't know, man. AoE? Um... I don't think they've given anything a third element type. I mean, that, that will be exciting when they do that. Sorry, Erdrick, but... Um, a normal unit. Anyway, for 50 points, this probably, guy probably was really good in Arena. Um, I, I only thought about Arena because, again, occasionally lowering bang resistance. Terrific in AoE. Actually, really good. Um, but just not irrelevant in Arena. What's his, uh, First Awakening gives him turns 2, 4, and 6 at the start of the action, restores MP... And raise the spell potency effects for three turns. Now, I found some spellcaster units don't get as much out of wisdom as you would think. So I actually really like this ability. Again, turns two, four, and six. Probably really good in PvE because you don't always start off being able to attack the first turn. In Arena, huge, huge blow in Arena. Um, I think if this was turns one, three, and five, everybody would be r ranting about what an amazing arena unit he was, and I'm not exaggerating. I think that would have been enough to make him a really, really good arena unit. Uh, especially, it reduces his... He comes base with 15% damage reduction for three turns. It's, it's not amazing, but it's something. So, what do you give this guy? Probably some more... Some kind of AoE spell or something, or a spell with... Uh, this guy, you could give him a status condition something, maybe? I don't know. Um, he's not awful. He's not irrelevant, but you know, who the hell ranked this guy up? Who, who drew for him? I didn't bother look. I'm not. I'm not going to look at his stats. And uh, Jesus, an hour. All right, gem slime. What do you What do you do for gem slime? Here's the problem with gem slime. Seraphie exists. That's it. That's that's his problem. Um, now they did try to make this guy hybrid, which you can do with a. a here's the, here's the problem with Kirill. Why Kirill didn't work as a hybrid? Because spells don't, you know, heals don't work with attack stat. That's that's why, that's why he sucked. Um, this is a healer that got a relevant uh, spell effect. Um, sorry, uh, yeah, a relevant spell and a good heal. Um, and not a lot of people when you compare him to Seraphy, because that was the only thing you could compare him to when he came out, or Seraphy to. Well, sometimes you know he heals status ailments, and that's true, and that can useful. I've literally never seen a situation where it, it, at least where people... I've never seen somebody say, the best thing for this strat is gem slime because you absolutely have to feel that effect. No, you just go with Seraphine. Um, somebody will probably correct me like, no, I did this fight with him and he was better than Seraphine hands down. I would, I would love to hear about that one situation. Maybe it exists. Um... But yeah, um, so I'm sure this didn't do enough damage for Arena. This guy came with, um, uh, reduces damage by 30%. That's good, but like, yeah, he's got no HP. Let's look at him Awakening 1. Nobody has this guy past Awakening 1. Slimes, my slime fame is at 35, so we'll put him there. Rank 8. Um, 558 HP. 30% HP reduction is not enough to make that good. He's half resistant to everything. Uh, except Zam, so he still has a weakness, but nothing does Zam damage. You know, a Stark? Stark's not gonna hit this guy. He's not, he's never gonna get close to him. Um, but, here's the, so he's still weak to Typhlus, or, not weak to Typhlus, but you know what I mean. Typhlus is not gonna be affected. Um, so taking 30% off Typhlus is not even close to enough. His defense isn't even high. It's average, pardon me, it's average. Um, 466 MP is actually actually low to average I think um, and this ability comes with a uh, raising ability MP cost by 20% to offset the reduced damage by 30% here's the thing there's a lot of units that have 15 or 20% HP re or damage reduction so it's just not good enough he does have auto MP regen um, 
but so that I mean if you're looking at him just as a healer um, I don't know how much HP that restores but it is every single turn golden multi heal what do you take 10% off that MP cost or is it like 1.5 I don't know say it comes down to costing 70 um, you're still not, like, he's not going to have the ability to, I don't think he's going to have Seraphie's long standing, because there's no, I think Seraphie's going to heal about the same per hit, but with her, uh, with her passive HP regen and, uh, you know, the regen effect that she leaves, I don't think this guy's going to hold a candle to her healing, so he'll probably need to heal, he'll need to use his heal ability far more than Seraphie does, so he's not going to be able to go 50 rounds like Seraphie does. Um, and then, you know, if you're healing, using Gold Cannon isn't even in the question. Um, oh, and I, sorry, these, these spell costs are not, um, as far as I know, unless he went out of, no, um, they're not affected by this 20% extra, so, um, yeah, that costs like 100 MP, this costs like one, over 160 uh, this guy is useful. This is an arena unit, but he doesn't do... He's gonna die to anything in arena. He's slow as hell. So, you know, he's got he's got good... Uh, you know, some AoE uh, type of spell damage can be really good in arena. If everything is slow as crap um, and presents themselves directly right in front of him because he's movement too. Um, and this only hits the unit... So it's... Okay, it is the unit three squares in front of him. It doesn't look like he needs to target anything, so that is nice. It's a good range on the ability, but it's only movement two, and he's slow, so... Um, what do you give this guy? You need to give him quite a bit. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. You, you need to give him a buttload of HP, some kind of different defense mechanic. Um, just, I don't know, can you just take away the MP... Uh, uh, bloat. It's just not necessary. I don't know what you do with this guy. He's just very flawed in his base kit, in my opinion. Again, please tell me about all the times he was very useful for you. He's not dead, but they, um, you know, they, 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 they tried to, they, they were too tight on his kit. They, they, were, they were too afraid to make him good. Um, and it was literally right before the one year power creep, so. This guy just never had a chance. Um, again, if he got a good Blossom, you know, you could make really good use out of all of his resistances and whatnot. Um, you know, the MP regen on Blossom doors can't be underestimated, but he's just his spells cost too much, and they don't do enough, I don't think. So, all right, God, I hope you guys took like some some bathroom breaks and some snack breaks during this. I didn't mean for it to be this long, but I mean I went over twenty units um always longer than i mean to um i don't know i was just talking for an hour uh so now you know <laughs> what hasn't been blossomed yet on jp and global um all right good luck guys i'll see you soon